Hello, welcome to your first illustrator assignment. What we will be doing for our first assignment are drawing two one inch cubes in two point perspective. We're going to have one cube that is above eye level and one that is below eye level. They will be one inch in size. This assignment covers many basic tools and an, an introductory points about working in Illustrator. This assignment will require you to set up two layers, use two colors, and two different line or stroke thicknesses, and use guidelines and rulers. Please build the two cubes as follows. On layer one, we will place all of our guidelines, and these will be 0.5 in thickness and be in magenta. Layer 2 will contain the 1 inch cubes that are drawn using 1 point thick black lines. Here I've started the project with a cube above my eye level. This line in here is acting as my eye level. I'll walk you through opening and starting a new document. Remember, this is a beginning level class and I don't expect that any of you have worked in Illustrator before. Those of you that may have, work at your own pace and those of you that haven't, it will take a little trial and error and a little bit of practice. And one thing I can say to all of you, you can access adobe.com and many questions can be answered there, especially if I haven't covered it yet. But I want all of you to understand that my demos that you'll see will be done in Creative Suite 5 on a Mac platform. Some of you might be on a Mac platform but using Creative Suite 6. The tools are the same. The work environment just looks different. It'll have a darker gray background. Um, some of you might be on CS5 and some of you might be on a PC platform. The Mac platform happens to be the most widely used um, industry standard in graphic design. Um, I'm sorry I won't really be able to troubleshoot anything on the other platform. Uh, with all that said, let's get going here and I'll show you how to start a new document. If I go under File, New, this window will open. All semester, I want everyone to use the same naming convention. It keeps me organized, it keeps you organized, and I can't emphasize enough that you need to save all your files. If I were you, I would have a secondary backup system like a thumb drive or a portable drive. Remember, computer crashes, power outages, other kinds of crises that can happen, you're still responsible to meet the deadlines, and turn in the work because I can only grade the work excuses won't count so any questions about backup shoot me an email and I'll help you out with that here your naming convention for all your assignments throughout the semester you're going to call it assignment one or assignment two assignment three assignment four etc and then you're going to use underscore your last name. You can keep everything lowercase. It can all just merge together like that. But I'll know who you are and what assignments what because your last name will always be part of naming the project. Okay. Here under number of artboards, it'll be one. And it's a page or a picture plane or a document or an artboard. So there's a variety of names that this document can be called. What this is showing you is different placement if we're using multiple artboards. And we will do an assignment later in the semester where we'll set up multiple artboards. But for now, we're just dealing with one page, one artboard. Our size will be a letter size. And we're going to work in inches as our increments, our unit of measurement. 
here you'll see the width is 11 inches wide by eight and a half inches tall because we're going to work in a horizontal landscape format. So I'm going to say OK. And there I have a horizontal 8.5 by 11 that I could begin in. Now I already have this file started, which is the same, except it has guidelines set up. And what I want to explain to you, which I'll go back to this document, is where do you find the rulers? Well, the rulers are under view. What I want you to get used to doing, especially as you're learning, is just look through the pull-down menu, read through it, and think about what it is you're looking for, and find it. Now you can learn keyboard commands as you go along, because all your keyboard commands are here on the side. Command-R would let me show the rulers. So if I click, there's my rulers. Now the other thing I want to make sure I'm going to be able to see are guides because I'm going to use the guides to show where the areas on my document or picture plane um, are so I can draw these cubes accurately. In this case, the guides are already turned on and I could use shift semi, or I mean to say command semicolon to show guides as well. Now what a guide is, I'm going to use the solid arrow tool here for now. I can pull this guide down horizontally and set up a horizontal guideline or I can set up a vertical guideline. And what you're seeing and what I have set up is I have these invisibles set up where um, as I'm working I it'll tell me if I'm on a guideline, if I'm on an anchor point. Um, that's set up under Illustrator Preferences. Um, under general, there's a variety of places you can look to set up um, different effects, different, um, um, oh, I want to say increments, um, like under units, I can set up everything general to be in inches. Strokes will always be in points, and so will type. You can dig around there and get things set up the way you like it. What I want you to understand is this. There are multiple ways to do everything. Up here, I can set a stroke and its point size. I can set up the color for it here, or I can set it up there, or I have colors over here and stroke right there and layers right there. I'm going to get to that, okay? <laughs> Step at a time. For now, I want to make sure you know where the rulers are and you know how to use guidelines. I'm assuming with this first assignment there will be some trial and error and practice, but that's what these are all for. All right, down here in this lower corner it tells you what view you're at, meaning have you zoomed in or zoomed out. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, and now my view down here says I'm at 150%. And I'm going to make this box just a little bigger so I can see the page better. What you can see is I've set up guidelines left and right that come a half inch inside the page. You can also see if I turn off guides that I've set up a vertical line towards the center of my page here where, where it's four inches and I've set up my eye level. So right here is my eye level. This cube is drawn above eye level. What I've used is layers. This button here is layers and if I choose, I can just pull this right here and keep it permanently open so I don't have to click for layers every single time. I'm going to need stroke often as well. So I'm going to pull that and leave that permanently out here. The other items in this palette menu I'm not going to use except for color. And I'm going to pull that and set it right there as well. I'm just going to move this off to the side. Now up here under Essentials, these will display different palettes and work um, space environments that are um, used, perhaps say you're doing um, a project in InDesign and you want this workspace to look similar to InDesign, or you're working on something in Photoshop and, and you want to put an Illustrator file in there. Um, the more proficient and, and accustomed to working in Illustrator, the more personalized you, you can set your workspace up. 
Notice when I clicked on Essentials, it put everything back to where it was. I have just my basic toolbar here and my palette bars there. Again, I'm going to just pull out my rules or stroke, my layers, because I'm going to need those, and my colors. Because those are all the essentials I'm going to use whoops, <laughs> for this project now. Well, if I double click, I think I can keep that open right there. There we go. So I think I have everything we will use. And I'm going to go ahead and view my guides, which I could use command um, semicolon. But in my demos, I'm going to use the pull down menus to help you learn where things are. All right. Here I've already set up an area that's one inch high. Notice on my rulers, I can see that it's one inch high. What I want to do is establish a strong straight vertical that's one inch high, like I did here, so I can begin to draw the cube below eye level. What we're going to use in our tool palette is the pen tool. When you click, you will notice there's different options for your pen tool. The only option we're concerned with right now is the top option, just basic drawing of straight or angled lines. I'm going to put this strong vertical line at the five and a half inch mark. Notice here it's five and a half. And I'm going to click, hold down my shift key and click again. And I'm going to check my stroke. And what I can see here is that stroke is magenta. And I can also see I've placed it on the wrong layer because that's where my guides are going to go. So I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to hit delete again and notice how that line's gone. Now to avoid that problem I just ran into drawing on the wrong layer, I want to tell you how to use your layers over here. To add a new layer, you click this button, New Layer. This window will come open. You can name layers, especially when we work in complex files, you'll want to name your different layers. Now you can set the color to be any sort of bounding box um, guide indication that you choose. I usually just let it go to the default and I'll say OK. You can move your layers by just grabbing them and pulling them and moving them around. Now I don't need layer 3 in this file, so if I have it highlighted, I can throw it in the trash. Now layer 2 is selected for me to draw on. Layer 2's colors are red and layer 1's are blue, and I'll explain that and show you um, momentarily. This eyes turn layers on and off for me. And this will lock a layer, so I can't draw on it. So if I select that layer and I try to draw on it, see how I have a pencil with a slash through it? This is not going to allow me to draw on layer 1 now. I do want to be on layer 2 because I want to go to this area and draw that vertical line I was trying to draw. Um, I'm going to change this so that it is black. So in my sliders here, C is cyan, M is magenta, and Y is yellow, and K represents black. These are standard primary colors used in the printing industry. We're going to build our first files as if they would print um, on a printing press, uh, like a, at a commercial printer. I find it easier to teach color and mix colors this way for beginning students because you could think of cyan as your primary blue, magenta as your primary red, and yellow as your primary yellow. And you can mix a wide variety of colors that way. Um, so right now I have my solid black chosen. I have a solid black stroke. I need a different weight of stroke or line. I need it to be one point. So now I'm really ready to draw that line. I'm going to draw it on the right layer. I'm going to have it as a one point rule and I'm going to have it be black. Now I'm going to bring my pen tool in this area where I want to draw my vertical line. And 
I'm going to place it at about five and a half. If I click and hold down my shift key, I can draw a perfectly straight line. I'm going to just click away and use my solid arrow tool because what I want to show you is see how I activated that line and see how the line is surrounded by red that indicates it's on the second layer. That's what this little uh, red line that's vertical next to the word layer 2 means. All right, I'm going to just deselect it so now it's not activated. I'm going to show you what this open arrow tool does. If I click on that line, you'll notice, I'm going to zoom in so you can see a little better, that this line has an anchor point, bottom and top. You'll also notice as I select that anchor point that I have my Illustrator set up so it'll show me the word anchor and then see that light gray box that comes up that says XY? It's showing me my XY coordinates. Y is um, the, well, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the rulers a little bit better. And I can click on that again so you can see. Y is expressing the dimensions uh, vertically against the 8.5 by 11 side. So here on my 8.5 by 11 sheet, let me zoom out just a smidgen more. There, now you can see the rulers. It's showing that at 4.49 inches, almost four and a half inches from the top of the page is where the top of this line starts. Then if I look at this anchor line, it's telling me that that line is at the 5.5 inch mark. See how you can see over here? And so basically that line's pretty close to being a perfect half inch high. The X coordinate is for the width. So it's telling me that I'm 5.49 5 inches from the left side of the page. So I'll just let you know what that means. I'm going to click deactivate and keep my vertical line. All right, so now I have a vertical line. I'm going to lock layer two, unlock layer one, because I want to draw the guidelines I need. Now this is very similar to what you were doing when you drew the cube in pencil in your sketchbook, except you could just draw the lighter lines and draw darker lines on top. Basically these are acting as our lighter lines and then on layer two are our darker lines on top. So the same principle is happening, we're just using a different tool, um, different media to accomplish this. Now this is going to be the top of the cube below eye level and I want a guideline that goes to my vanishing point. Now what I need to make sure I set is the correct color 100% magenta. I'll turn the black off and I want it to be 0.5. Perfect. Now I have the guideline I need and I'm drawing just line segments. When I draw an angled line, I do not hold down the shift key. Holding down the shift key will always draw a straight line. All right, pen tool. I'll just stay on the right hand side. I'll go to my vanishing point, deactivate. I don't want to keep the line selected because I don't want to keep adding to it. And there I have just my single lines that show the left and right sides of my cube. Now one thing I need to point out down here, look at the bottom of your um, toolbar here, and you see these shapes. This indicates how I can color stroke or line. The box behind it, this is for fill if I draw a shape and I wish to fill it with a color. What I've done is I've turned it off. I've clicked on this box to deactivate it because what I want to draw this drawing with is just a series of plain lines. If you're drawing 
and you notice some kind of white shape appearing, it's because you did not draw um, a hash through the uh, fill tool. So what you're going to want to do is make sure you click this box here. This goes to your defaults, like if I click here, I will have a white filled box with a black rule, and what this arrow set does is let me toggle back and forth between them. See how I could have a black shape with a white ruled box, or vice versa. When this is on top is when you can select it and deactivate it. So I have to click on it to bring it forward. Again, up here, this is telling me I have no fill. I can change that up here at any time as well by selecting any of these colors if I choose, but I don't want any fill. And again, this is my stroke and I can choose any of these colors here. We'll talk about what these are um, a little later, not today, because we're going to work with these sliders and our files that we're building will be in CMYK. Notice how it says CMYK preview in the different files I've opened. All right, we're almost done with this. I'm going to go back to my pen tool. I am going to lock layer one and unlock layer two, select layer two, and I'm ready to make my two sides. I want to make sure that I have a one point thickness, that I have it set in black. And when I look here at my ruler, notice the top, one inch is at six and a half. So I can just look and I can go to my guideline I've drawn, I can click, hold down my shift key, and I can accomplish a nice straight line on the right side of my cube. Select my pen tool again, do the same thing, measure, look where I'm at, think about it for a moment, make sure I'm as close as I can get. The more you zoom in, the more accurate you can be. I'm gonna click, shift, down and then I'm going to just deselect it. So you can see I have three vertical lines. Now I need to draw the top. I have to establish my two sides before I can go back and draw the guidelines that I need. I'm going to lock layer two, unlock layer one, select layer one. I'm going to select my pen tool. I know that I need magenta and I don't need black and I need a half point. The more you work in Illustrator, the more second nature things become and the faster you'll get. I'm going to use that vanishing point there. Deselect. Whoops. See what happens when you don't deselect? I'm going to do Command Z for undo. Hit my arrow, deselect. Grab my pen. Go to my other side. Go to my vanishing point. Arrow, select or I should say deselect, and you can now see how I have the top of that box. I can zoom in a little bit. There you go. So you can use Command plus, zoom in, Command minus, zoom out. So I'm going to get a little closer so you can see what's going on. All right. I'm going to lock layer one because I have my guidelines. Now this is the easy part. I'm going to select layer two. Again, I need my pen. Um, up here for stroke, um, I'm just going to, yeah, there we go, one point rule. Over here is where I'm going to change the color because I know it's 100% black. Grab my pen and click. I don't hold the shift key because that's at a slight angle. Now I could draw this as one continuous shape now that it's established. Whoops, let me click. I select my anchor point there. Anchor point. Sorry about that. <laughs> and if I select, oops, Command Z. Command Z again. I'm going to deselect it. There we go. <laughs> deselect there. Um, I'm going to zoom in just a tad. See how I'm off? Um, you can't, let me center it for you. Whoops, 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 too much, too much, too much. There we go. If I use my open arrow tool, I can grab this anchor point where I'm off and I can drag it to where it needs to be. 
So remember, open arrow tool will select individual anchor points that you can move and your solid arrow tool is going to select groups, entire lines, and you can easily move them. Command Z will put it back. I'm going to use um, Control or Command minus and all I need to finish this box is the bottom. Remember, if you don't deselect the line, it'll automatically be linked and connected and continue drawing. And that's not what you want to do here. Oops, I'm trying to center it. I moved a little too far over because I need my open arrow tool so I can just scoop that line down. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to select hide guides and that pretty much shows my two cubes. I do want you to zoom in and make sure your corners are nice and neat and match up well and I'm going to lock layer two and, and I'm going to turn the eye off so I can see it just like that. And that concludes what I need you to do this week. We won't save this as a PDF. We'll do that for our next assignment. For this assignment, I want you to save it just as a native Illustrator file. Um, and when we go to the next assignment, I'll have you backtrack and generate PDFs of this assignment. So that's it for now. Thanks.